Okay, I've had a customer bring me two chairs. Uh, these little wood frame, kind of Frenchy looking chairs, and she's already done her seats, but the backs on these have a wicker on them, and one of them was torn up pretty bad, and, and now she doesn't want to replace the wicker, but she was hoping that we could uh, upholster these backs. Let me show you what they look like. Here's the chair. She's done her seats, and she's got a back. Now this one's okay, other than a little discoloration, but the other one must have been torn up pretty bad, so uh, she was trying to get it cleaned out as best she could. So what I'm gonna do uh, is, because this has this lip, is I'm gonna go clean this up, and then we're gonna upholster an outback that'll show through the backside over here, and then uh, put a webbing in it for, for kind of a, for stability, and then pat it and upholster it, and then put a double welt around the, on the inside on both of these. So I'm gonna clean this one up, I'm gonna completely cut this one out, and we're gonna reupholster them. The way they apply most of these uh, wicker uh, insert is they, <clears throat> they have what's uh, like a bead of uh, wood in a groove, and they'll, they'll take a, some of the wicker that's in a, weaved up in a size, and they'll basically upholster it on here, in here, and then they'll put that, you know, pry it in with that bead uh, to secure it in for good. I don't want to take this bead out because to me it's just wood filler for me to staple into. So what I'm going to do is just kind of cut the edges, uh, cut this off, and you'll see as I go. I'm just kind of, uh, kind of, you know, like you would a razor blade on on tape on a windshield. Basically, just kind of scrape it off with my knife. Okay, with this new one, or the one that hasn't been removed yet, what I'm gonna do is about where the middle of it is, um, you know, in the middle of the wood area, you know, a little bit back from the, the bead area that's holding it in, I'm gonna cut around that with my knife, and then I'll go back and scrape it off like I did the other one. And you can do this, you're not limited to having to use an, this type of an upholstery knife. Uh, I like this part of a, of a, just a regular pocket knife. Uh, I think it's stronger than using, or better than using that. I'd rather not use this one, but use one that's more for cutting edges. And one thing that I do as I go, is I like to make sure that it's, you know, I'm keeping some kind of an edge on my knife. So I got, I keep a old piece of uh, belt sander and wrap it on a board. And then I can just kind of, Lightly do that on occasion. It's almost like cutting hard fabric. <clears throat> Thank you.
All right, I've now got both of these surfaces ready for upholstery. All right, one thing I like to do before I start upholstering, you know, an inside outside type back like this, is to double check and make sure that my edges don't have any raw spots uh, or areas that need to be touched up with stain before I do my upholstery. So I always take one of these little, you know, little stain pens and you can get them in different colors. I, I generally use just a dark walnut. And what I'll do is I'll go around the edge of this and just make sure that I've got a good dark edge to upholster, you know, to when you see it from the backside along that edge. All right, now that I've got the edges where I like them, I'm gonna go clean my fingers. I could have done that process with a pair of gloves and not got anything on my fingers. And normally when I do staining, I'll use gloves so there's a lot less cleanup. But if you ever get stain on your fingers, you know, from lightly doing little jobs like that, I just use mineral spirit. That cleans it up really good. Now the client wanted to preserve as much of this yellow fabric as possible uh, with this print. So she elected to use this fabric as the outbacks on the chairs as a contrasting fabric. Now that I've got my outback on and the good side is, you know, is facing down, so you'll see it from the back side, I like to take just a thin piece of Dacron and split it like this. 
And what this does is when you put your webbing over it, uh, in some cases, uh, depending on how light the fabric is, um, it'll either imprint with the webbing or in some cases you can see the webbing through it. So, um, and it, it's not necessary on this fabric, but I'm gonna show you the process anyway, just because um, you never know, you know, you, what you, last thing you wanna do is when you see your upholstered piece, see what looks like a webbing on the back side of it. So what I'm doing is splitting this out. It just makes it a thin layer to, to buffer that. About an inch around from the edge of the wood is fine. You always need to be aware of how much of a lip you have to work with inside here, you know, around the edge of the inside of the board here, uh, because you're going to be, you know, putting an outback in it, and you're going to be putting this webbing on here, and then you're going to be putting another uh, cover on that. And some of these companies are real idiots at how they build these. You might get a quarter of an inch. I've seen as little as three sixteenths or so which is hardly nothing to work with. So at all times you have to be aware of which way your staples, you know, guns angled so that you don't shoot the staples and they come through the back. And you don't want to see those and you don't want them tearing up your back. So um, I've got this. I try not to overkill uh, putting a backup, you know, something to strengthen the back end. So I always run just a strip down the center up front to back and one side to side. And that is plenty sufficient. Now, depending on how, uh, what kind of seat depth the chair has, will sometimes determine how much padding goes in these backs. And and this this one's set to where it just has, you know, more or less your thinnest type back, which usually I'll put a one inch uh, poly foam on and then glue a one inch, I mean, a glue a Dacron to that. And, and I'll show you the process how I do that. One little hint, if you use any kind of spray glues uh, for anything, uh, before you just walk up and spray one of these things, you need to check the, they always have a little bit of glue stuck on them and you need to try to pull what you can off and then go to some flat surface that's not gonna be anywhere around your fabric or your, the piece you're working on and spray it and make sure that you've got a normal spray coming out. Now, a lot of these cans have a twist top and the further right you go, the bigger the spray, the further left you go, the smaller the spray angle. So, you know, we wanna know that too. But the reason you wanna do that is because when that dries up, 
You can go everywhere and it can mess up everything. Right, it's that dreaded time in any upholsterer's life when he has to cut fabric. And this is when big mistakes can happen. It can cost me lots of money. All right, I'm working with a fabric with a sizable pattern. So uh, the cuts I need are gonna be 18 wide by 20 up and down, which are fine. I can you know, use this side of the pattern instead of cutting out of the center, which wastes a lot of fabric. So I'll get my uh, two M backs side by side over here, and then I'll try to use the set, you know, what's left over here for my double welt and preserve as much going up the roll as possible. 